Chapter 4 Owen tucked into his sandwich happily, moaning appreciatively. Sirius ate his slowly and carefully. He was still chewing at regular intervals as Owen finished and sipped the last of his coffee. He sighed contentedly. Ah, I feel human again. See, home-cooked food is just better, Owen stated. Is it still home-cooked if it's done by an automaton, sir? queried Sirius with his mouth full. Owen frowned, looking over at MV3, who kept herself busy sweeping the floor, even though they were perfectly clean as far as he could tell. You're right. It never occurred to me that the chef would be a Vark, Owen shrugged. Well, machines know how to prepare food, you know. They get it just so. But you said earlier, Sirius interrupted. Nobody likes a pedant soldier, Owen parried. He saw MV3 tending to a small potted plant. He stood slowly and went over to her. He noticed the Vok was trimming the plant ever so gently, and then giving it a small amount of plant food. I love plants, Owen said to her. MV3 turned her head towards him. Sometimes I think I like them better than people, he joked. They are certainly better conversationalists, MV3 said flatly, but Owen noted, despite the tone, the air of humour. He chuckled. I didn't know you were programmed to make jokes, he said. It helps with customer service if I make stimulating conversation. Do you have any plants? The Vok inquired. Owen nodded enthusiastically. Yeah, I have a little cactus I've had for ages. He stays in my quarters and always looks pleased to see me when I get home. I call him Archie. Dumb, I know. Listen, my friend and I are looking for something, but we're not exactly sure what it is. Is there anything unusual around here? Owen said quietly. I am sorry, sir, but I never leave this place, so I know little about the area. My duty is to the company. I serve food and drink to those who need it and maintain this place. It is not in my programming to venture outside. However, that man over there is a regular customer, and I believe he lives nearby. Perhaps he can provide you with information. MV3 gestured in the direction of the dishevelled man. Owen looked at him again. He shrugged. Will do. Thanks, M. You are most welcome. MV3 went back to her duties, and Owen casually walked towards the man. Hey, excuse me, I was just wondering. Before Owen could finish his sentence, the man stood and reeled on him, grabbing him by his collar and tossing him onto the table, pinning him there. The next moment he had his knife held against Owen's neck. The commotion alerted Sirius, who dropped his food and stood, raising his blaster rifle. Whoa, Owen said in surprise. A bit of an overreaction there, buddy. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Put down the commander or I will open fire, shouted Sirius. The man didn't release Owen, but neither did he kill him. I'm not your enemy, Owen said, serious now. My colleague and I were sent to find the source of an alliance signal. Where are you now? said the man with a husky voice. How do I know I can trust you? I know there are people in the alliance who are less than honest. They have their own agenda. How do I know they didn't send you to silence us? Us? Listen, I don't know what you're talking about. My name is Commander Owen Mendez. I'm not here to kill anybody. I'm here to determine the source of the signal. If that's you, I'm not exactly sure why you'd send one. Commander. Mendez. You're the same rank as I am. Well, was. The man withdrew the knife from Owen and pocketed it. He then took down his hood, revealing gruff features and harsh eyes. His hair was long and shabby, just like his beard. Andrew Bolt, former Eden Alliance commander. Bolt? I've heard of you. You were leading a voyage to the new settlements in the newly discovered systems in Remedia, weren't you? He noticed Sirius was still aiming his gun at him. Oh, you can put that down, Sirius. He's not going to hurt me. Are you, Andrew? Andrew took a step back, holding his arms up in mock surrender. The clone lowered his blaster. The mission went rogue. I don't know what happened. We were in cryo, then we woke up in the wrong place. I had a crew of four. One of them woke up a day before us and left in a one-man craft. Never heard from him again. Silas Henshaw. He was the only one of the team I didn't hand-pick. We found ourselves on the edge of Dalek space. Not a nice place to be, Owen chided in. No. We were shot down by Daleks, but managed to salvage a short-range vessel to make the jump out of Dalek space and to the nearest human-occupied world. This was as far as we got, but Aaron's not exactly civilization, and ever since I've had this niggling feeling that Henshaw's mission was the real one, and that ours was just a cover story, and us, expendable. Then why did you send a signal? You were pretty safe out here, Owen asked. My colleague, she doesn't believe me. She thinks it's all a big misunderstanding. That Henshaw was acting alone. Andrew's eyes were narrow and suspicious. Maybe she's right. I know the Alliance isn't perfect, but Colonel Banton's never let us down. We weren't assigned by Banton. Our orders came from the new Colonel, Nathaniel Thorne. Andrew said, Nate. Owen muttered a little confused. Your colleague may be right, though.
It might all be the actions of one man. I can get you and your comrades back to civilization, back to your old lives. My ship's in orbit. We can make it back to Eden in less than a day. What do you say? I'm not sure. I need to chat it through with Anna, my colleague. You said there were four of you, mine essential, that these three. Owen questioned. My other colleague, my friend, died, Andrew said sadly. I'm sorry. Daleks? Owen asked. Andrew shook his head. If you want to talk it through with Anna, feel free. My friend and I will follow you back to wherever she is and we can go from there. Andrew frowned, his eyes still suspicious. What? I don't know you well enough to trust you. Andrew growled. How well do you have to know me to trust me? Owen replied. I'm not sure I'll ever trust anybody again. Owen looked at the shabby officer, and then to Sirius. Sirius, you should go back to the ship and wait for us there. I'll go with him, Owen ordered. I'm not sure that's a wise suggestion, sir, said the clone. Wouldn't mistake it for a suggestion, soldier, Owen said, for the first time using his true authority. Sirius saluted and exited the cafe, his sandwich only half eaten. Shall we? asked Owen. Andrew made to leave the diner, and Owen took out a bundle of money and left it on a table, turning to MV3. That should cover both of our bills, Em, and there's a little extra. Get yourself some more plants, eh? Place could do with a little more life, Owen said. Thank you, sir. Please come again, the robot replied politely, retrieving the money. Owen left the diner and followed Andrew. Sirius had reached the dropship and was a little angry. He didn't like being sidelined. The console bleeped and a voice came through the communication system. It was another clone that spoke. Incoming communications for you, CT4892, the voice said. Understood, Sirius said. A moment later, a screen activated with the spectacled face of Colonel Nathaniel Thorne on it. Colonel Thorne, how may I serve you? Did you locate the source of the signal? Nate asked. Yes, sir, Sirius replied. Nate nodded to himself, a small smile on the edge of his lips. The commander's just rendezvousing with the commander Bolt and his comrade. All being well, we should be coming home within the day. That's excellent news, soldier. Have them sent to my office at their earliest convenience, please. They're long overdue for a debriefing. Understood, sir, responded Sirius. The screen went blank as the communication cut out abruptly. Then Sirius waited.